Hello and welcome to the 15th video in this beginner's guide to Adobe After Effects. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about the pen tool and paths in After Effects. In the previous episode, we looked at making shapes using the Shape Builder tool and the various ways they can be customized. Now there is another way of making shapes. In After Effects, we have what is called the pen tool. In After Effects, this can be used to create custom paths which can join to make shapes, which can be used for animation sequences. Now, some of you watching that use Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop may already be familiar with the pen tool. In After Effects, the pen tool works quite similar to how it works in Illustrator and Photoshop. Now, if you are already familiar with the pen tool, then you may want to skip ahead to the next video. Though, if you are new to the pen tool, I would strongly advise you continue with this video. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss the pen tool and the concept of paths in After Effects. So in this video, we are going to be covering the following topics. What is the pen tool? Drawing with the pen tool and modifying shapes with the pen tool. So by the end of this video, you will know everything there is to know about the pen tool. So let's get into it. So here I am in After Effects and I have a project open here demonstrating some paths and shapes I have created previously with the pen tool. This project also includes some worksheets. These include some paths and shapes we are going to be creating later on. So let's start by taking a look at this document. Now, if you want to follow along with this video, you can open this document I have prepared especially for you. This can be found in the essential practice folder in the project folder, and you can download this project folder for a small fee. The download link with the instructions is in the description. The download folder comes with lots of exercise documents we will be using on this course that have been carefully developed to aid your learning experience. The folder also comes with document resources such as videos, graphics and images you can use to build your first video presentation from scratch later on in this course. To get the full learning experience, I recommend you get the project folder. Download link with instructions is in the description. So with the project folder open, click into the S2 Essential Practice folder, into folder 15, Pen Tool and Paths, and open the Pen Tool After Effects file, and you will have the same document I have open here. Okay, so what exactly is the Pen Tool, and what are paths? Well, in After Effects, the Pen Tool is used to simply draw and modify paths. These paths can then be used to perform a series of creative tasks. In After Effects, we can find the pen tool up in the toolbar, about seven icons right of the selection tool, and the icon looks like a fountain pen. Looking carefully, we can see this little triangle at the bottom right of the icon. This means there are several tools available here. Now, if we move our mouse cursor up to the pen tool, we can click and hold, and we will see some tools expand. So available here, we have the pen tool, the add vortex tool, delete vortex tool, convert vortex tool, and Mask Feather tool. For now, we don't need to worry about these. I'll be discussing these shortly. So first, I want to draw your attention to Comp 1, Paths Examples. And you can find this comp by clicking on the first tab at the top of the timeline panel. So I'll make sure the magnification ratio at the bottom of the composition panel is set to fit. I'll place my mouse cursor carefully between the timeline panel and the composition panel. When the mouse cursor changes to arrows up and down, I'll click and drag down a little. This will allow me to expand the composition panel so we can see this a bit more clearly. So here I have two paths I have created previously in After Effects. Now, in a previous episode, we undertook a simple animation where we moved a circle from left to right across a straight path. In After Effects, we can use paths like this to animate along. So instead of animating in straight lines, we can animate along a particular custom path like this and I'll be showing you how to do that later on in the course. But for now, the first thing I want you to do is activate the selection tool. You can do this by pressing V on the keyboard, and you will notice your mouse cursor change to a black arrow. Then I want you to click on the top stroke example to select it, then carefully double click on the stroke and you will see a dashed bounding box around it. Then click once and you will see some vertex points on the edges of the path and the vector outline that makes this path. Now, some of you familiar with Illustrator and Photoshop may know these as anchor points. In After Effects, these are referred to as vertex points, but don't worry, they are pretty much the same thing. 
So here we have a simple stroke. This was created using the pen tool, and we can see that from the start to the end, it consists of five vertex points. So I'll double click off the stroke into the white space to deselect it. Next, with the selection tool still active, I want you to carefully click on the next stroke example to select it. Then carefully double click and you will see a dashed bounding box around it. Then click once and you will see some vertex points on the curves of the path. If I press and hold shift and select the other vertex points on the path, we can select them all. Upon click, we will see the path outline and the vertex points and handles that make up the path. So here we have the same stroke path as above with five vertex points, but this time there are curves applied to the corners. So I'll double click off the stroke to deselect it. So next I want to draw your attention to comp two, shape examples. So either double click on the comp in the project panel, or you can click on the second tab here on the top of the timeline panel. So here we have a random looking shape with hard corners and a blob shape with nice curve corners. Again, these were created using the pen tool. So like we did with the previous paths, let's come and click on these. So I'll press V to activate the selection tool. Then I want you to click on the stroke of the first shape to select it. Then carefully double click on the stroke and you will see a dashed bounding box around it. Then click once and you will see some vertex points on the edge of the path outline that makes the path. So I'll double click off the stroke to deselect it. Next, with the selection tool still active, I want you to carefully click on the next shape example to select it. Then carefully double click and you will see a dashed bounding box around. Then click once and you will see some vertex points on the curves of the path. This time I'm going to press and hold shift and click and drag over the other vertex points of the shape to select the other part of the path so we can select them all. Upon release, we can see the vector outlines and the vertex points and handles that make up the path. So I'll double click off the stroke to deselect it. So next, I want to draw your attention to comp three, modifying shapes. Now you can double click on the comp in the project panel, or you can click on the third tab here on the top of the timeline panel. So here we have some random looking shapes that have been created by modifying shapes made by the shape tool. In After Effects, the pen tool gives us the flexibility to edit and modify shapes we make using the shape builder tool for further customizability. And we will be having a go at making these quite soon. So now we are familiar with paths, vertex points and handles. Let's start to draw some paths and shapes. So now I want to draw your attention to the worksheets folder over in the project panel. Now I have put these together to help you. So first I want you to double click on the first comp, path worksheet, and you should see these two path guides. So at any point we can activate the pen tool by simply pressing G on the keyboard. When the pen tool is active, you will notice the mouse cursor change shape, and we have this little fountain pen. This means we are ready to begin to draw. Now before I start to draw, I want to come to the top of the interface section and first set the color and stroke size. So first, click on the word fill next to the color box. Upon click, we will get the fill option settings menu. In this instance, I will set the fill option to none on the far left and click OK. Next, click into the colored box next to stroke and set a black color. I'll click OK, then I'll click on the stroke size. I'll type in 10 and press enter. Also, at this point, it's really important we have the Roto Bezier checked off at this point. If for whatever reason this is checked on with you, make sure this is checked off. So I'll begin from the top and start to click onto each square point along the first path. As we click and drop down these points, we begin to draw a line. So I'm just going to drop down five points here along my first worksheet path inside these square points like so. And we have just created a simple line stroke. Easy. So I'll press V to activate the selection tool and double click off the stroke to deselect it. Now at this point, look carefully down in the timeline panel. Upon creating this path, we now have a shape layer present. Okay, so that was quite easy. Let's now look at how we can create a curved path. Now, it's really important to mention at this point that before we begin to draw any new shape or path, we first need to make sure we have the previous path or shape deselected in the timeline panel. If not, then as we start to draw a new shape or path, it will be added to the selected shape layer. Now, in some instances, you may want to do this, 
but for now we want to create individual layers. So with the first shape layer deselected in the timeline panel, I'll press G on the keyboard to activate the pen tool. When the pen tool is active, you will notice the mouse cursor change shape again to the little fountain pen. So my stroke and color settings should still remain from the last stroke settings. No solid color, stroke color set to black and stroke size 10. So to do this, I want to show you a quick technique I use, and I call this the click and curve technique. So let's begin to click some points down along the second path. So I'm just going to drop down five points again along my second worksheet path inside the square points like so. And again, we have just created a simple line stroke like before. So I'll press V to activate the selection tool and double click off the stroke to deselect it. And looking down in the timeline panel, upon creating this path, we now have another shape layer present. So with the path created, now I'm going to add curves to the line to match the guide behind. So I'll press V to activate the selection tool and click to select on my path. Now I'll come up to the pen tool in the tools menu and click and hold. And I'll come down and select the convert vertex tool. So I'll now move my mouse cursor carefully over the first vertex point of my second path. Notice as the mouse cursor hovers over the first point, the mouse cursor changes to a upside down V shape. So I'll begin by clicking and dragging over to the right. As I do this, we will see some handles pull out and we can start to add curve to the line. Now I can click and drag the angle in any direction, but if I want it to be at a precise angle, I can press and hold shift as I drag like so. So I'll drag out a little and release. So now I have just added the first curve. Next, I'll come down to the next point and again click and drag out right like so, while holding shift to get a precise angle. So now I have just added the second curve. So I'll come along to each vertex point and carefully click and drag out to the right, while holding shift to add curve to the line while attempting to match the guide below. Don't worry too much if you do not match the guide exactly, this is just a quick reference. Once we have added the curves, we can double click off the stroke to deselect it. Now, what if we want to make some tweaks to that line, perhaps alter the curves a little? Well, this can be done easily by first selecting the path, and I'll press V to activate the selection tool and select the path. Then carefully double click on the path and you will see a dashed bounding box around. Then click once and you will see some vertex points and the handles appear. Now, in this case, only some of the handles are appearing. I'll press and hold shift and select the other vertex points of the path, so now we can select them all. So with the handles visible, you can now click and drag on the handles individually to make any adjustments. I'll just click and drag on some of the handles and pull them out, again holding shift, so they are at precise angles to match my guide below. Once I'm happy, I'll double click off the stroke to deselect it. Okay, so let's now move on to the next worksheet. So now I want to draw your attention to the worksheets folder in the project panel. So now double click on the second worksheet, shape worksheet, and you should see these two shape guides. So unlike the previous path example, in this exercise, we are going to draw some complete shapes. So first I'll press G to activate the pen tool. When the pen tool is active, you will notice the mouse cursor change shape again to the little fountain pen. Again, my stroke and color settings should still remain from the last stroke setting. No solid color, stroke color black and stroke size 10. And I'll begin from the top and start to click around into each square point like so. Now, when I click on the last point, on the start point, notice that as I roll my mouse cursor over the start point, there will be a little circle to the bottom right of the cursor icon. This is telling us that if I click this point, we will join the path. So I'll go ahead and click to join the path. So just like that, we have created a shape this time. And upon creating the shape, we now have a shape layer present in the timeline panel. So the only difference here is joining the path at the end instead of keeping the path open. So let's now look at how we can create a curved shape. So with the first shape layer deselected in the timeline panel, and again, I'll use the same technique as earlier. So let's begin to click some points down along the second shape. Now, just like earlier, when I click on the last point, before the start point, notice that as I roll my mouse cursor over the start point, there will be a little circle to the bottom right of the cursor icon again. 
This is telling us that if we click this point, we will join the path. So I'll go ahead and click to join the path. And again, we have just created a shape like before. So I'll press V to activate the selection tool and double click off the stroke to deselect it. And looking down in the timeline panel, upon creating this shape, we now have another shape layer present. Okay, so with the path created, now I'm going to add curves to the line to match the guide behind. First though, I'm just going to zoom in here to get a closer look. And I'm going to do this by rolling on my mouse wheel. So I'll press V to activate the selection tool and select my path. Now I'll come up to the pen tool in the tools menu and click and hold. And I'll come down and select the convert vertex tool. So I'll now move my mouse cursor carefully over the first vertex point on my second path. Notice as the mouse cursor hovers over the first point, the mouse cursor changes to an upside down V. And I'll begin by clicking and dragging over to the right. As I do this, we will see some handles pull out and we can start to add curves to the line. So I'll carefully click and drag the angle to roughly match the guide below. So I'll drag out a little and release. So now I'll move along to each vertex point and carefully click and drag out to add curve to the line while attempting to match the guide below. Now don't worry too much if you do not match the guide exactly, this is just a quick reference. So to move around the canvas area easily, I press and hold spacebar and click and drag so I can see my points easier to edit. Now be careful, sometimes you may need to click and drag up, down, left or right to get the right curve. Once we have added all the curves, we can double click off the stroke to deselect it. Now in this instance, we will want to make some tweaks to that line. So I'll press V to activate the selection tool and select the path. Then carefully double click on the path and you will see a dashed bounding box around. Then click once and you will see some vertex points and the handles appear. Now in this case, only some of the handles are appearing. So I'll press and hold shift and click and drag over the whole shape. Upon release, we should now see all the handles. So with the handles visible, you can now click and drag on the handles individually to make any fine adjustments. So I'll zoom in and click and drag on some of the handles and pull them out to match my guide below. Easy. Once happy, I'll double click off the stroke to deselect it and zoom out. In this instance, I'll click the magnification pop-up at the bottom of the composition panel and click fit. So that's how you can easily draw shapes in After Effects using the pen tool. Now, what if I want to modify a path or a path of a shape to add or take away a vertex point? Well, let's now move on to the next worksheet. So now I want to draw your attention to the worksheets folder over in the project panel. Next, double click on worksheet three, modifying shapes, and you should see the shape examples. So these three shapes were created using the shape builder tool. Here we have a basic square, a hexagon and a star shape. So let's see how we can modify these shapes using the pen tool. And first we will start with the square shape. So I'll press V to activate the selection tool and select the square. Now, when you create a shape using the shape builder tool, initially the vertex points on the stroke are uneditable. To edit the shape using the pen tool, we must first convert the point to a bezier path. So with the square shape layer selected, I'll come into the timeline panel and first we will drop down the settings of the layer to reveal the contents and transform options. I'll click to drop down the contents. In this instance, it says rectangle one. So I'll click to drop this down and we can see the path, stroke and fill options. So now I'm carefully going to place my mouse cursor over rectangle path one, right click and select convert to Bezier path. So now I can click the top toggle button next to the layer name to snap the options closed for that layer. And I'll come back into the compositions panel and just double click off the shape to start. And I'll just zoom in a little. So I'll click the shape once, then double click, then click once again. And now I can click on my vertex points and move these around if I want to. But in this instance, I don't want to move them around. So I'll press Command Z on Mac, or Control Z on PC to undo. Now, in this instance, I want to add vertex points to my path. So I'll come up to the tools menu, click and hold on the pen tool, and this time select the add vertex tool. Upon click, you will now notice the mouse cursor change to a pen icon with a plus next to it. So I'll come to the center of the path line here and click once on the path. Upon click, I will add a new vertex point to my path. 
So I'll press and hold spacebar and click and drag down like so. And again, I'll click on the path in the center to add a new vertex point. So I'll click the magnification pop-up at the bottom of the composition panel and click fit. So next I'll press V to activate the selection tool and now I can click to select and move my new vertex points around. In this instance, I'll click the top one and move it up and I'll click the bottom one and move this one up as well. And I'll double click off the shape to deselect it. So just like that, I have used the pen tool to add new vertex points to change a simple shape to create something new. Okay, so next we have this hexagon shape. Let's see how we can tweak this. So remember, before we edit a shape made with the shape tool, we must first convert the path to a Bezier path. So with the hexagon shape layer selected in the timeline, first we can drop down the settings on the layer to reveal the contents and transform options. I'll click to drop down the contents. In this instance, it says polystar one. So I'll click to drop this down and we can see the path, stroke and fill options. So now I'm carefully going to place my mouse cursor over polystar path one right click and select convert to Bezier path. So now I'll click the top toggle button next to the layer name to snap the options closed for this layer. And I'll come back into the composition panel and just double click off the shape to deselect. And again, I'll just zoom in a little. So with the selection tool, I'll click the shape once, then double click and then click once again. And now I can click on my vertex points. Now I can come into the pen tool menu, click and select the convert vertex point tool I'll come to the left side of the hexagon, click and drag up or down like so to add curve to the left side. Easy. Next, I'll come to the right side and click and drag the point out towards the right. I'll press V to activate the selection tool, then grab the far right handle and carefully drag that in like so to create this unique shape. And I'll double click off to deselect. So I'll click on the magnification pop-up at the bottom of the composition panel and click fit. So just like that, I have used the pen tool to edit a simple hexagon shape into something new. Okay, so there we just added some vertex points. Now, what about taking vertex points away? So next we have this star shape. Let's see how we can tweak this. Now, remember, before we edit a shape made with the shape of the tool, we must first convert the path to a Bezier path. So with the star shape layer selected in the timeline panel, I'll come and drop down the setting on the layer to reveal the contents and transform options. I'll click to drop down the contents, and in this instance it says Polystar 1. So I'll click to drop this down, and we can see the path, stroke and fill options. So now I'm carefully going to place my mouse cursor over Polystar Path 1, right click and select Convert to Bezier Path. So I'll come and click the top toggle button next to the layer name to snap the options closed for that layer and I'll come back into the composition panel and just double click off the shape to deselect. So I'll just zoom in a little and with the selection tool, I'll click the shape once, then double click, then click once again and now we can click on my vertex points. So now I'll come up and into the pen tool menu, but this time I'll select the delete vertex tool. Upon click, you will now notice the mouse cursor change to a pen icon with a minus next to it. So I'll come to the top of the star and click a vertex point. Upon click, that point will be removed. I'll come to the bottom of the star and click on the middle vertex point. Upon click, that point will be removed. So I'll press V to activate the selection tool and I'll click and drag the two top vertex points up like so. I'll come back into the pen tool menu, click and select the convert vertex point tool. I'll come to the left side of the shape and click and drag down like so to add curve to the left side. Then I'll come over to the right side and click and drag down to add curve to the right side. Then I'll double click off to deselect. So I'll click the magnification pop-up at the bottom of the composition panel and click fit. And just like that, I have used the pen tool to edit a simple star shape into something completely new. So that's how you can easily modify paths and shapes using the pen tool. Now keep in mind, you can use this technique when editing paths and shapes you initially create with the pen tool. For example, if we jump back into the second worksheet, Shape Worksheet, where we created some shapes with the pen tool, if we press V to activate the selection tool, click a shape, double click, and then click once again, we can select the vertex points. Just like adding points to the shapes, we can click the Add Vertex Point tool and click on the path and press V 
to use the selection tool to move that point around. And we can also select the delete vertex point tool to remove points. Now, keep in mind, when you create the shape using the pen tool, we do not need to convert the paths into Bezier paths like we did with the shapes. When you draw with the pen tool, it is already a Bezier path. So that's how easy it is to create paths, create custom shapes with paths, and then modify your paths using the pen tool. So over the past few episodes, we have learned the many ways we can create and modify shapes in After Effects. Now it's time to look at how we can apply color and stroke effects. In the next video, I'll be demonstrating how you can apply a variety of fill and stroke effects to your shapes in After Effects. So see you in the next video.